Hi guys, Con here. So today I am in the new BMW 6 Series Gran Turismo. Okay, so this variant that I'm having here, the 630i GT. It is the only variant of the 6 GT on sale in Malaysia. So uh, it is powered by the 2 liter B48 engine. Now, um, so the the 6 series okay uh, it is mechanically based on the 5 series so it shares much of the 5 series uh, mechanical bits the engine okay despite getting the 30i designation the engine tune of the B48 actually follow, follows that of the 730i as opposed to the 530i so what this means is that instead of getting 252 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque as per the 530i you are getting 258 horsepower with 400 meters of torque as per the 730i so in performance terms this is one step up from the 530i okay now um, I've already done a detailed walk around of this car during its launch you can find the link to the video in my description section below but later on um, I'll do another quicker walk around a short walk around just to highlight a few details that I missed out in my previous video as well as some of the things that uh, because of the lighting of the launch that day did not turn out clearly okay so this video I'm focusing more on the driving experience of this car and um, so here comes to my main point these days right over the last two years I would say BMW reviews have become quite predictable the reason being is that their cars have become so predictably good there is barely anything to criticize from a driving experience standpoint because the engines are powerful the handling is uh, solid the ride quality is good Fuel, even fuel efficiency also relative to the outputs that you are getting is fantastic so yeah BMWs uh, of the last five six years right you're talking about the F30s the G30s um, the 7 series I have no doubts the new G23 series will follow the same pattern but all recent BMWs have become so predictably good to drive uh, there's nothing new to add to the narration now this two liter four cylinder engine um, this b48 engine we have we are quite familiar with it and uh, it is a very talented it is a very capable engine very wide breadth of abilities it is punchy let me show you now i engage sport mode right This thing pulls like a bullet train and uh, Bobby tells me that from his experience he drives the, the, the previous gen 640i cabrio that, ha that has a 3 litre inline N55 engine with 300 horsepower. He says this car will out accelerate his 3 litre 640i. My take on that is if he was wrong he certainly wasn't wrong by much because as I demonstrated just now this thing can pull it really pulls and the ZF 8-speed gearbox this has been in use for the past what nearly a decade but it is a tip-top piece of hardware that has no major known flaws uh, the programming of this transmission the calibration of the software is spot on it always 
almost always finds itself in the right gear you barely ever need to use this pedal shifters even for even when you are you are you know in enthusiastic driving mode so engine is good transmission is good handling also very good uh, this car this car like all BMWs excellent high speed stability uh, very very agile on the corners as I pointed out in my uh, in my, my launch walk around video all right with this new generation of BMWs you get the 2 liter inline 4 yes they are powerful but at the same time we also miss the characterful tunes of the old six cylinder engines okay but the flip side the benefit of using these uh the, the newer smaller engines is that the the lighter mass up front translates to reduced understeer it translates to sharper handling and this is an observation that i've made since the F10 5 Series that BMWs, recent BMWs, they handle better when you have a four-cylinder engine as opposed to the six-cylinder engine. The six-cylinder engines, yes, they are creamy smooth, right? But the optimum handling balance really belongs to those cars that have the four-cylinder engines. If you don't believe me, go ahead take a 730i for a test drive and you'll get what I mean. So what about ride comfort then? Uh, the 630i rides very well. In Malaysia, we get this car with air suspension as standard. Um, well, recent BMWs, right, they, their ride quality have been already been good with or without air suspension. So, but the air suspension certainly does no harm to the ride quality of this car at all. It is very beautiful, very plush, very pliant, and like Bobby points out, even in sport mode, the car just seems to glide over potholes and patches of road, whatever not. In fact, the whole driving experience of this car, there's only one thing uh, that to me is worth complaining, is the steering. Uh, when you're driving it in comfort or eco pro modes, all right, because the nowadays with electric power steering you can quite easily vary the assistance levels in comfort and eco pro mode the steering is a little bit too light all right it weighs up in sport plus really but not to the level that you find it to be a very sporty steering uh, the brakes are very very good okay um, earlier today I deliberately accelerated hard and slammed the brakes on a empty stretch of road and it 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 hauls this heavy ass vehicle from 100 to to a standstill just like that no fuss okay so overall right from a drive perspective there really is very very little to criticize about this car so really right as a whole the 6 gt is uh, actually a very appealing car on many levels because uh, it is excellent to drive okay and uh, I would say that it is a decently handsome car and um, you get a very spacious vehicle right inside it is very spacious at the back you get excellent leg room plus the fact that you get a full-size bench that supports your thighs all the way so i would say that you know if you are taking this on a long distance drive kl penang kl malacca kl jb kl Kuantan, you can ferry four people in this car absolute comfort no issues okay so if you're talking about purely if you're analyzing this car purely on its merits as a product right there is there, there is nothing to to pick because uh, you look at this car 50k on top of a 530i you get a bigger car you get slightly more power in your engine you also get 
uh, better equipment, you get heads up display, you get uh, uh, autonomous emergency braking and, uh, and autonomous driving aids, which the 530i had during its CBU model but was deleted for CKD. You also get Harman Kardon's uh, audio, which I believe was present in the 530i during this for the CBU batch but taken out for the CKD versions. Okay, so it is, yeah. If you're looking at this versus a 530i for that 50k premium it is well worth the step up from a 530i to this car okay even if you're talking about say me the 530i handles better yes but i will tell you not by much and certainly not by margins that you would appreciate on day-to-day -day driving so the only qualms really about this car are uh, two. One, the usage of the 6 Series nameplate. Now, quite simply put, I don't understand why this car cannot keep the 5 Series Gran Turismo plate as before. I mean, granted, the 5 GT was not a very well regarded car, right? But, you know, it, the name does not have the kind of history that the 6 Series names has. Because when you talk about the 6 Series, you, it, it, it's the lineup, the, the, the lineage started with the, the E24 6 Series, all right? Then it took a break for a while. It took BMW like what, 15, 20 years before they replaced it with the E63 6 Series. And then after that, the E63 grew up to become the F12, F13 uh, 6 Series that uh, from which they also launched the very, very stunning uh, 6 Series Grand Coupe. But now, the 6 Series has become a hatchback. Now, granted, it is, a, it is you can say this is a sportier looking car than the 05 GT. And I'm quite sure BMW will probably argue that, hey, you know, you look at this car, it has that Coupe-like profile thing and all that, but still, what is wrong what was wrong in calling this a 5 gt the five this car you could have carried the 5 series gran turismo nameplate and and all would be good right as bobby points out this car if it was called the 5 series gran turismo it would be now known as a sleeker 5 series gran turismo right instead of now being called a bulkier 6 series which is not exactly a compliment all right so the other the other uh the other thing i want to point out with this car of course to me it is the lack of a six cylinder engine right and i think i've raised this before today right okay now traditionally we have always associated bmws with their legendary inline six engines but today, if you are in the market for an inline six engine, the Mercedes showroom offers you way more options. Yeah. So, I mean, the only BMW inline sixes that you can buy from the showroom, I mean, assuming you don't go for a special order, are the M cars. Okay, you, you, BMW has evidently not bothered to give you a run-of-the-mill 6-cylinder 5-series or 6-cylinder 3-series. Okay, 3-series, never mind lah. Or 6-cylinder 7-series or 6-cylinder 6-series. To me, um, I understand the logic that now consumers primarily will buy the four-cylinder engines and I, I i remember earlier in the video i mentioned that from a handling perspective the four-cylinder engines offer superior dynamic balance versus the six-cylinder engines but when you come into this you know the premium segment it is always good to have options that motivate your clientele to work a bit harder and upgrade so today 
Mr. A walks into a BMW showroom, signs his check for a 630i. You want him to collect his car and look at that 640i over there and say, hmm, maybe if I work harder, one day I'm going to I'm going to get upgrade from this to that. Okay? Yeah, so yes, you won't get as as many people buying the six cylinders now, but I think the option should still be there. And I would think that versus the three series or the five series, I suspect that there would be a lot more taker of say a 640i 3 liter. I mean, now this car, you are moving into the 400, 500,000 ringgit price bracket. I find hard, very hard to believe that there won't be enough takers for a 3 liter engine at this segment. And you have to also think that coming from a 5, the previous gen 5 series Gran Turismo, okay, this was my argument at the time. If you are coming from a previous gen 5 series Gran Turismo, Chekai Chekai also your car will be a 535i or a 530d, 3 liter inline 6. Then you come to this fella. Uh, I go from 3 liter to 2 liter. Is it an upgrade? Ah? It's not really an upgrade, you know. You don't feel like you have upgraded, even though, right, objectively, this car may, may outrun the old 535i GT. But when you come from an old model to a new one, you want to up, upgrade. To something bigger you at least want the option of going into something bigger so i think this car uh, for all its merits really could use the option of a six cylinder variant okay but after i posted my my, my video uh, my launch video somebody commented okay kapil commented on my launch video that this car the 630i s is is actually a very appealing car to upgrade to if you are coming from an f10 528i especially 528i uh, because you are driving let's say right now you are driving a three year three year old four year old 528 you're looking to change car you are not ready to make that jump to a 7 series or an S class then you look at the BMW showroom you see from the 528 to the 530 hey, that's not a big jump at all eh? but when you go from an F10 into this now that is something to consider because you are getting upgraded performance you are getting uh, a bigger car and you are you are in a way you are moving up a segment so if you're coming from an f10 5 series right this is actually a very very uh, appealing upgrade path uh, for you to consider all right guys so while we wait for the rain outside to stop here's a quick run through of the interior all right um, so at first glance, this really looks like uh, the cabin of a 5 Series. But uh, if you compare to the 5 Series, this area uh, now gets a bit more uh, contours and texture to it. Okay, But the overall control scheme is the same. So if you have just come from a G35 Series, you come inside here, it's a straight swap. The same thing, no difference whatsoever. Okay, uh, here you get this I, the latest generation iDrive with a rotary knob and also the, the touch screen. Okay, plus you also get gesture control here. All right, you get gesture control. Uh, the climate control is also operated by touch, but you get when you press this, you get the, the, the light really to res, as a so like responding to you okay and uh so here are the virtual instrument clusters now these virtual instrument clusters right uh it shows you what a how conservative bmw is when it comes to their cabin design or rather how rooted they are to the tradition because we have seen this two 
dial configuration on BMWs for as long as we can remember. But so now, even with the freedom of virtual clusters, they are still sticking with uh, showing the instrument cluster in this in this two two dial formation, right? So you can change it to when you change it to comfort mode, change it to eco pro, change it to sport. The uh, the appearance alters slightly, but you get basically the same configuration over and over again, All right? Now you come here to this touch screen. Allow me to highlight something to you. Um, So you actually, all right, one of the things you can do with this car, all right, you can actually adjust the ambient lighting. Okay, so there are various options, green, blue, and I think you can, you should be able to see, yep, the gentle shifting in the tones of the dashboard. Blue. Uh, of course, the, the, the selection of colors are not as varied as Mercedes, but you get the options, right? You get these options. The overall build quality of this dash is very good, right? Everything is well put together. Uh, the material selection is good. And, you know, it feels solid. It's, it is a... It is the, the you know a big step up if you are coming from the F10 generation BMW, right? This is that this is the same league as the G35 series, right? So, uh, but one thing having coming just from the X3, right? This car also exposes some of the flaws in the X3's construction because when I when we were in the X3, the X3 it feels just as solid, but somehow you get the impression that with the X3, BMW skimmed on their material selection a little. But this one, they did not. This one, they are they are very generous with their material selection. So there's also a good contrast of colors, layering, uh, interplay of materials. And you see, especially here, right, like the 5 Series, you get these panels that flows into the instrument cluster whereas in the x3 right this part of it there's just one plastic slapped here like that so that one did not look terribly expensive and uh, here you also get this mechanism that slides in and out yeah so uh the overall feel fit and finish uh, of this cabin really is very very good no complaints from me whatsoever one thing that i do want to point out is the lock and unlock button so they have it on either side on the driver door on the passenger door but why would you want to do that previously bmw put their lock and unlock button in the along somewhere along the center console so both driver and passenger can access to it now you have two switches okay and not only that in some models like the x3 and the x2 the passenger side one uh, it's not there, you know. So it's like, I believe it could be a cost option in overseas market. But yeah, that is a rare ergonomic error on BMW's part. Okay, guys. So right now I am trying out the active cruise control system of the 6GT. I've set a cruising speed of 90 kilometers per hour. And uh, that Ford Ranger in front just came into the lane. And the car has reduced its speed to let him ah now see, so here there's this car that just cut into my lane and all right the car just gently reduced speed to let to to allow now this civic is letting itself into my lane and the car slowed down not bad so uh, now i'm moving to a clearer lane and the car is gently picking up speed and the car, the Alza in front has braked so we are slowing down as well now interestingly right um, the dash, the graphic on the dash display this one here it still shows an F10 5 series okay guys so here we are the new 6GT over at the back there that is the previous gen F10 uh, M Sport so uh, as as I pointed out in my early, earlier in my video and highlighted by Kapil right if you are coming from an F10 528 
this actually represents a very very good upgrade okay a big step up so you look at this uh, uh outside okay the the front the front the front look this is this car is mechanically based on the 5 series so you can see the the rough resemblance to the 5 series of course there's some differentiation in the details you get the uh, you get this part this went here right here in the 6 GT this is sharpened down okay to to give the car a bit of a more aggressive appearance i guess the headlights okay uh, at one glance they resemble the units found in the G30 but the shape also is different so it's not interchangeable uh, to me for my tastes I actually prefer that of the uh, the 5 series but this is also a very handsome looking car the highlight of this car's design actually to me is the profile really okay let me give you uh, the view from this angle okay this uh, this is this car sits lower than the previous Gen 5 GT. Uh, it's closer to that of the, I would say, the Audi A7 Sportback and in some ways the Porsche Panamera. Okay. It's, uh, to me, I think, you know, having the 5 GT was a bit of an awkward design, but this one, BMW has refined the formula. This is good looking. This is handsome. To me, these proportions are very, very nice. And of course, one thing that, uh, common with the uh, previous gen 6 series you get frameless doors so that is bmw's claims to this car's more uh, sporty positioning i guess right uh, so this is in malaysia the 6 gt comes standard in m sport trim so you get these beautiful 20 inch alloy wheels with m performance brakes inside and uh, you notice that another another unique touch of this of the 6 gt's design are these air breeders right these are actual aerodynamic, dynamic, aerodynamically functional vents. They channel air from the wheel well out here. So the biggest change of the 6 GT from the 5 GT, of course, is this is the rear end really, where they made it a lot sleeker. But there is a price to be paid because uh, the previous Gen 5 GT, it had a split opening tailgate. So if let's say you park in a low, low parking lot, right, you can open the boot like this or you can open the whole tailgate but with the 6 gt here you open this oh look at that so this tailgate only opens like this and it opens to a very tall opening height so uh, if you stay in a low parking lot or if you are staying at if or your your power parking is very low right you may have to adjust the opening height of this okay uh, and as you can see look at this this is a massive boot check it out okay you raise this there's a gas strut there holding it up and uh, yeah so you get hidden compartments underneath here okay down here is where you you can remove this 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 board and this board here you can remove them and slot slot stow them away under here and um, here this you get remote release of the seats. Okay. Right. So you get power closing. Of course not. Okay, guys. So we have Charles from Werns. Going to sit in. Okay. So here's our Tauke sitting in. You get, as you can see, he got, he, he's getting good thigh support and also he also has excellent excellent leg room right like bobby points out this has as much rear room as a short wheel base 7 series so therein lies another argument in favor of this car right that come that comes back to the point of this if you are coming from an f10 a 5 series lah you are looking for an upgrade but you don't want to make that sudden that massive leap to a 7 series this is a good stepping point okay you are getting as you can see here you are getting a visibly bigger car with more features uh, you can also legitimately consider this as a car from a slightly higher segment than the 5 series so overall can't argue man this is a brilliant this is a brilliant package and here check this out okay look at the rear lights this they actually put the effort in to give this a bit of a three-dimensional effect this part sinks in right and this bulges out
Okay, so it, it emphasizes the, the, the lighting elements of the, of the taillights. Very nice. All right, guys, so that's it. That's the 5 Series Gran Turismo. Uh, tell me what you think of this car. Drop me a line in the comment section, okay? All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. If you like my content, click on the subscribe button. Uh, press the bell icon to toggle the frequency of updates every time I upload a new video. And uh, don't forget also to check out the channels of Bobby, Bing, and Fadil, okay, of the Horizon team. And until my next video, thanks for watching. Bye for now.